welcome to another one of my tutorials about mapping using OpenStreetMap. This time we're going to use the app Street Complete, which is an Android app. So a couple of weeks ago I surveyed memorial plaques in Kilkenny and I learned that it is very helpful to know which house has which number to put the position of the plaque on the right house. Like, let's say there is a terrace of houses that was built on the initiative of a certain mayor and this mayor put a, a memorial plaque on the buildings then and there is a street in Kilkenny where this certain mayor has put three plaques on the on the one terrace and two on either side on either end of the terrace and one is in the middle but I had to figure out which house it was and for that purpose it is very important to have house numbers on the map and for any type of purpose it is important to have house numbers. This is just to justify why it is important for a heritage society to add house numbers. In Ireland, buildings have been added to OpenStreetMap in a systematic manner since November 2019. And if you want to join that project, just visit tasks.openstreetmap.ie and find your way around there. But you kind of have to have done a bit of mapping beforehand. At least watch one of my introductory tutorials into the ID editor or find another one by someone else like Tad Cantwell has done one which is on the OpenStreetMap Ireland YouTube channel. And yes, I admit that requires a bit more effort to begin with, but you can make all these efforts into social events, offline or online. And you might be lucky that you live in a county that has already been mapped in a way that all the buildings have been added, like Kilkenny. Or just happen to be in a town that was part of our buildings project. So let's presume you're lucky enough to live in Kilkenny, Waterford or Carlow counties, that is where the buildings project has been finished and all the buildings have been added to the map. So here's an idea for a project after lockdown, of course. Maybe pair up a youngish person with an Android smartphone with an older local person and let them map street names, house numbers and even more details about the buildings. Using Street Complete, in my experience, that results in really slow walks. And you might wonder, where does the heritage come in in that? Well, apart from your streetscape being part of your local heritage, why not record the older person talking about their memories connected to the houses being mapped? So just have a voice recording app running in the background, or have a dictaphone. But for the mapping part, we'll use the app Street Complete. It is a very handy and super easy to use app for Android phones. You can download it from the Google App Store, and you can use different providers to log in but I would say that your OpenStreetMap account is the safest bet. Presuming you have already created one. If you haven't, that would be a good point to do it. So once you've started the app and logged in, you can go to the settings and choose the quests you need for this project. Those would be the ones relating to street names, house numbers and building types. The app will only ask for house numbers for residential or commercial buildings, not for sheds or garages. So adding the building type might be the step before the house numbers. All the information is automatically uploaded to OpenStreetMap for anyone to use. You can of course go in with an editor later on if you made a mistake or you noticed a missing or recently demolished building. Once you have that particular street completed, you can use field papers. There will be another video about that. To do further surveys and add monuments or memorial plaques because now you can say when you're going around with your field papers, this plaque is on number 19 and this will help you to add this information to OpenStreetMap. Whereas beforehand there might just, just be unnumbered houses and it'd be difficult to recognize the house that the plaque goes on. And all the data you've added and collected with StreetComplete is there for everyone around the world to use. And again, if by chance your town or village has already all its buildings and even the house numbers mapped, you might not need to do all these steps. One of the really neat features on Street Complete is um, if you're a person that gets confused when you have a map that's aligned to the north, but you have to walk to the west and you, you can't really know, do I turn right or left now when you come to a corner, is that in the app you can just turn the map so it is aligned to where you're walking. So if I'm in Magdalen Street and I want to go towards John Street, I can just turn it like that. 
and the map will just follow me around wherever I go and, and I can just look ahead or I can look right when I'm looking at the house number one and look left when I look at the one that doesn't have a number and so on. I think that's really neat and if you want to turn it back to align to the north you just click on the little compass and it aligns it. And if you come on a really short walk with me on Maudlin Street I will show you how I added the house numbers. It's really self-explanatory. It shows you a pop-up and you click on the pop-up, asks you a question, you answer the question and you get the next question. For any surveying that you do on your phone, I would recommend that you bring a power bank because you don't really know how long it will take you and you don't want to run out of juice when you're in the middle of a survey. So I click on the icon that shows the house number, I copy the house number of the door and you see that after a few seconds it turns into the next quest which asks for the level of levels of the building. Here again I add the house number of the door and the next building is a shop, a bicycle shop. So I add the name for the shop. Sometimes it will not have a house number so you, the, you just go under other answers and it gives you there is no house number. And this one I went into OpenStreetMap later and split the building because it's actually two houses. And I indicated that by putting in the house numbers 91 to 92. And this one as well I had to split. And then I added all the levels of the buildings. If you have a look at all the other quests, you'll notice that there are a few tourism related ones. And we all know how heritage and tourism are connected. And if you fancy another slow walk unrelated to heritage, why not choose a completely different group of quests like the ones for visually impaired people or bicycles? The app is quite addictive, especially when you discover that there is a ranking system. Maybe this is also an idea to keep the children busy when you're walking. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. And please leave your comments and likes below. Thank you.